Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Ajian and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Governor DeYoung versus Senator Donna Storg on the future of the Lavalley substation. The second part of an interview involving the grieving widow whose husband was murdered and a great corporate sponsor has 2020 vision for the future. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. In our top story tonight, we now know the identity of the woman who lost her life recently in an automobile accident on St. Thomas. News Channel 8's Lee Carl from St. Thomas has more. We have identified the victim of the weekend traffic accident on St. Thomas as a 54-year-old woman, Ann Norris. Police officers spotted her body lifeless on the side of the Belongo Bay Road. And Saturday, police gathering evidence of the scene. And Norris, a St. Thomas resident, was hit by a large, sustained major head now, this area, of course, this road is traversed by large uh, construction trucks and trucks going to and from the landfill. The Thomas resident now appeared at the scene while the police were investigating and said he believes he was the person who hit the woman with his truck. He said he was not aware of it at the time. Police questioned the van, then they confiscated his truck. An autopsy on Norris's body is not yet complete, and meanwhile, an investigation to determine the cause. The action is ongoing. The results should soon be released by the IPD Traffic Investigation Bureau. One area that's being investigated is whether there was lighting on that road. In St. Thomas, we call for News Channel 8. Earlier today, Senator Donna Storg visited the site of a proposed area that will be the LaValle substation, or hopes to be. News Channel 8's Wes Small on St. Croix caught up with the senator. Where do we stand so far uh, with, with you coming up here today and alerting the media here? Why are you here, sir? Well, I'm here because I think a promise is a promise. You know, the administration, by way of legislation that was passed by the 27th legislature, they made a commitment to the people of um, La Valley, uh, Mambiju, and all the other surrounding areas that they would, in fact, uh, put a substation here. The senators uh, in the 27th legislature appropriated a sum of $450,000 for the residents here because they recognize that the residents in this area, being sort of a remote area, were underprotected and needed to be protected. I'm here because that obviously fell on deaf ears. The administration have not responded to date. And I read this morning in the article, uh, article in, the, in the Avis that I was being attacked by the administration because I spoke out and asked them to follow through on a promise. Yeah, and one of the things that Julia Watley said, who represents the governor in the interview, was you didn't vote for this measure in the first place. I wasn't, I wasn't in the past legislature when they appropriated the $450,000. Well, that might so, have something to do with so, it. So she needs to, to, to do her research. But isn't it the, the, the motive operandi of the, the, the leg, I mean, of the of government house, the governor, to put his public relations person to try to attack my character and attack me personally, when in fact we're straying away from the fundamental issue? And the fundamental issue, I mean, is here we have a dilapidated building, a promise that was made to the residents of this respect area to make sure that there is a substation placed in here to house fire, police, EMTs, and that the residents would in fact be protected and the response time to residents if there is a crime or is there, there's an emergency, the response time would be a lot quicker and I think it's only but fair. So do you think a substation would stop all that and people could stay open as long as before? We have full moon parties like we used to up here? Oh, most definitely. And as I said, I think the people of this area is underprotected. And I'm not, you know, I, if I may just stray slightly away, I'm not going to get involved in these trivial arguments with the governor and his public relations people. There is a fundamental issue here. And I don't think the people of St. Croix, the people of this area, La Valley, Mambiju, and all the other surrounding area wants to hear about a person who are elected official, don't know what they're saying, what they're doing. I mean, after all, just to illustrate an example to you, uh, when I spoke about the governor using public funds and his private residence, 
presidency. It was the governor's public relations person that went out publicly and said that I was being frivolous, making frivolous comments, that I was a liar, that no public funds were used, again, attacking me personally and trying to attack my credibility. What has evolved from that? And I'm saying we're here today. The people don't want to hear anything or don't want to experience these repeated attacks. You can attack me, okay, that's fine if that's what you choose to do. That's their motive operandi. But I want to remain focused. I'm here in La Valley, and I would like to see that at $450,000, if the commissioner of the police, which I'm willing to work with, uh, he and I have had a good relationship over the years. I'm hoping that we can, in fact, get the $450,000, rehabilitate this building, house both fire and police, and if I may add, EMTs here in this facility, that the response time, that the people of this area will, in fact, be protected because that's what it's all about, protecting life and property. I'm here with Ampara, who is the owner here and proprietor. And let's ask her what a substation would mean to this community. We need a substation here in the community to keep us safe because it has been a lot of crimes and robbery around here. What's the next step then? Right. Well, the next step is I'm going to forge a meeting with the uh, police commissioner and ask him to work in tandem with me. That see if I can get some level of cooperation from him because I think we should serve a common good here and that is to make sure that the residents of this area is protected. Our viewers tonight are wondering the same thing. Are you going to be running for governor next election? Uh, what I have allowed for my campaign supporters to do is form what you call an exploratory committee. I'm not driven by self-motivation. I'm driven by the people and uh, let the people be the ones to decide what they would want me to avail myself. So that could be a yes. It could be a yes, it could be a no. I just, I remain, you know, I've been loyal to the people at the Virgin Islands. And if you look at my track record, I've always uh, ended up making uh, sacrifices and being ostracized for taking a position that is right. And it is going to be no different in all my future pursuits. If, if, if you are a senator, say next term, just for, uh, for here's sake, would you take a reduction in salary at this time? I've said that my track record speaks for itself. I have voted for every reduction. In fact, I was the one that uh, tried to maverick legislation through by, in a way of a, a resolution to allow for the people to vote to determine the size of their legislature, self-destiny. And unfortunately, the senators decided to tell the people at the Virgin Islands that they had a right to be wrong. 